Welcome back, guys. Um, I've got the uh, panel mounted to the front of that chopped down power uh, computer tower. Um, I'll put a link to my uh, the video where I chopped this tower down. Um, I now have that uh, DVD case slash vinyl stuck on the front of it now. Um, the last video, I had the layout of the uh, posts too far over to one side. They were actually touching the metal. Uh, the edge of the metal frame here for the drive bay. Um, so anyhow, I hope this is uh, catching uh, catching my voice enough and uh, picking me up on the microphone. Um, as you can see, I've got my Tovo battery here, and uh, it's just sitting here at uh, uh, just a little over 12 volts, 12.83. Um, this is dialed in at according to the writing on the battery, as far as I understand it for this battery, it likes to be slow charged at 13.6. Um, uh, it says it can be fast charged at 14, but uh, to just leave it hooked up 13.6 and no more than 2 amps, but uh, I have this set to be uh, 0.75 amps, I believe, but it's pretty close to being charged, so you'll see the amps won't be too high. What I did add is a switch, because of the way that this one works, I've become I kind of like the the on off aspect of this the digital supply where you can just push a button and it's on and off so I put the uh, an enable switch here so if you can see that um, it's only using about uh, oh yeah there you go the amperage is dropping down now because the battery is pretty close to charged um, so that amperage is going to go down now you can see um, voltage on well, this is pretty close to that little module but I still have it set up the same way we got volts and amps I just gotta print new stickers for these two the two control knobs and I just have a set of alligator clips heavy alligator clips that uh, spend most of the time attached to this battery for powering other things but uh, this has made it extremely easy to charge this little battery I don't have to get out my bigger charger um, and of course I can run my other stuff on the bench now each one of these power supplies this power supply and that power supply um, are being supplied by one of the 12 volt rails in this from the AT, ATX power supply in this uh, was essentially a chopped down computer case um, and then that goes to that little buck converter which I did another video about which pushes it up to 30 volts I don't know if you can see that on this but the input uh, for this one is currently dialed in at 30.34 um, which gives me the ability to buck that down to as low as this this one will go I think this one you can bring it right down to almost nothing um, this one here goes down to about 1.6 or 1.8 volts I think that's as low as this one will go um, and the amperage uh, now apparently can go to all the way off. Actually, the amperage never goes fully off. It goes down to some ridiculously small, uh, small number of milliamps. But I have to have a meter hooked up to see what that amperage is because um, it's below its decimal points below what this displays, which is actually kind of neat. Um, you have more control on amperage on this than it appears, at least by that display. You do need an external meter to see um, the level of resolution the amperage lets you adjust. The voltage, again, is controllable roughly to half of the next decimal place that you can't see. So it makes getting the, makes get setting this voltage pretty good. But again, you kind of want a meter just to back up what you've had it set to if you're looking for something precise. But, you know, for example, if I dialed in at 3.3, it might be 3.2 or 3.7 or something like that. Um, and uh, that's about it. I mean, that's just a matter of the des number of decimal places it can show. But for smaller projects like that or something digital, I'd probably use this power supply. Um, I mean, right here, actually, you can see it's coming closer. It's nearing the end of the charge because this is now only drawing uh, point, uh, 230 milliamps. Well, it might be a little more than that. I could hook, I get another meter and hook it and uh, put it in series, and it would tell us the, the amperage. Um, but, uh, yeah, anyhow, the power supply is mostly done. Um, I want to, um, 
probably make another redesign of this face one more time to give me um, the regular ATX power supplies so I have a, uh, a ground a bigger ground than the 12, 5, and 3 that comes straight from the power supply right off the bottom and I'll probably cut make use of these weird tab marks that come from the DVDs I'll probably cut those up and then make a lip that goes across the bottom so it'll be nice and flush and I won't have these funny little cutouts down here um, other than that though um, it's working good uh, also because of the type of tower it is um, you can put things you can put things right on top of it it's a steel case right um, probably gonna end up with my fabricator mini back there just because of the layout of where it is on my desk uh, and it's the right width actually for a fabricator mini to just sit on top of it um, be also handy if it had enough power to run the fabricator mini because I think my fabricator mini is 12 volts and uh, it's only something like 6 amps or something like that but um, that's a whole other issue Anyhow, this is the update for this. I uh, didn't want to get uh, into too much other than show that the the old the, the old controller here is uh, perfectly good for charging old lead acid batteries or 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 whatever you need to charge. I like to charge it. Um, I have some of these six volt ones here too. Um, yeah, these things. Um, they're six volt, and when I looked up their reference. Uh, they're uh, 7.3 volts. Yep, is what they're when they're full. So I need to uh, charge them, and apparently they charge at about 8 volts to bring them up to that. So a little bit more than that, but around 8 volts brings them up there. Anyhow, um, just in this video alone, I don't know if you can see. Oh yeah, let me just check the screen. Whoa. <laughs> Popped a spring clip here on us. There you go. Let's see if I can shade that in. No. It's kind of hard for me to. We got a lot of daylight here today. There we go. Does that make it any more readable? No, I guess it's all the same for you guys. Uh, let's see if I can retarget the focus. Yeah. Yeah, there's my, my hand makes it. That's uh, yeah, my hand gives you just enough shadow. Thirteen point four is what it's reading at now, and uh, it's only putting two hundred and ten milliamps in there. So this is pretty much getting close to full. Of course, that's ice cold. I had a thermometer on it when I was bringing it up from from half dead. This never changed any temperature, and of course I can turn that off just by doing that. And you can see it was set to thirteen point five. So so it's um, getting pretty close. Now you can see some drop off on the battery there, but I'll just turn it back on again. It'll try the amp and then we'll zip right down to where the current charges pretty quick. So it's getting pretty full. That's good. And then of course, uh, I'm not going to get too much into this module. There's a bit of flex over there. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of videos about how these little guys work. Um, I think later I will do a uh, a double I might order another one of those and then make a a different slightly different layout and then have a double double digital one like that and probably relocate this particular charger slash power supply into a, a different box we'll see anyhow uh, that's uh, I guess kind of the finish for this one the, the bench power supply for now until I come up with a different layout um, Anyhow, uh, for those of you that were watching or you were just seeing this, I've got some other videos related to this now. If you're just catching this now, um, there's a video on when I chopped this case down, um, some first attempts at some of this paneling, uh, how to set the memories on this. Those are all different videos. Um, I'll try and put a link to them later. Um, again, for just one question I had, um, the plastic, the DVD, the old big black DVD cases are made out of is about uh, 1 to 1.2 millimeters thick some sort of mix of vinyl and um, ABS I think um, it smells like a blend of vinyl and ABS when you heat it up with a hot knife and it's actually pretty flexible 
but it will eventually just snap, kind of like a, a brittle ABS or a PLA. Anyhow, that's really what this plastic's like, so it makes it really easy to make a, a quick uh, a face for something. But anyhow, um, as always, if you like this kind of stuff, uh, don't forget to subscribe and like. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.